I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Tuesday, September the 6th, 2016. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu today reiterated Israel's willingness to meet with the Palestinians without any preconditions. He made the remarks shortly after arriving for a two-day visit to the Netherlands, where the Prime Minister met with his Dutch counterpart Mark Rutte. Referring to an invite last month from Russian President Vladimir Putin to host direct talks between Israel and the Palestinians, Netanyahu said today that he would meet with Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas in Moscow or anywhere else. Yesterday, Netanyahu met with Russia's Middle East envoy Mikhail Bogdanov in Jerusalem. After that meeting, Netanyahu's office released a statement saying that the prime minister was, quote, reviewing the Russian president's proposal and the timing of a possible meeting. And speaking from The Hague today, together with Prime Minister Rutt, Netanyahu restated his position. He said, this is something I've said a hundred times and I will repeat here. I'm not choosy about the place, whether it's here in the Netherlands or in Moscow, it's no problem. It could absolutely be in Moscow. I said as much to President Putin, and I said it just yesterday to Russian envoy Bogdanov. Netanyahu said the only question now was whether President Abbas would agree to meet with him without any preconditions. He referred to conflicting reports on the matter, including from the Times of Israel that cites Palestinian ambassador to Moscow Abd el-Hafiz Nofal's remarks to AFP, that Abbas had agreed to a meeting with Netanyahu, but claimed that Israel was postponing. Other reports say that Abbas had not agreed to a meeting and was waiting for Israel's response to Palestinian preconditions, namely a freeze and settlement building and a release of Palestinian prisoners. Netanyahu also announced today from the Netherlands that the Dutch government will work together with Israel to build a gas pipeline to Gaza. Netanyahu said his cabinet was working to improve the supply of energy and water to Gaza, including the pipeline. The prime minister will remain in The Hague for two days and will also meet with King Willem Alexander. IDF soldiers came under fire last night near Israel's border with Gaza. Palestinians opened fire at the troops near the northern border. In response, Israeli tanks fired at two Hamas terror targets. No injuries were reported on either side. Also last night in the West Bank, IDF troops arrested six suspected Hamas operatives and seized stockpiles of weapons, including explosives. The Associated Press reports that the world's main scouting organization has denied any connection to a Palestinian scouting troop that honored a terrorist. We reported to you last week that the son of Jerusalem terror victim Richard Lakin had called upon the scouting organization to expel the Palestinian troop for its honoring of his father's killer. The East Jerusalem troop had dedicated a training course to Baha Alian, one of two Palestinian terrorists who murdered three Israelis, including Lakin, who was also an American, last October in Jerusalem. Lakin's son Micah had appealed to the World Organization of the Scout Movement last week to expel the troop. On Sunday, spokesman for the organization Stephen Peck said that the East Jerusalem troop is not a member of the organization's Palestinian affiliate and has no right to speak or publish on their behalf. In an emailed statement, Peck wrote, the World Organization of the Scout Movement strongly condemns any acts of terrorism and all actions which seek to support them, adding that WSOM also condemns any attempts which seek to link our members with any such actions. And the Associated Press reports that Katrina Lantos Sweat is the latest person to return a distinguished award in protest to Hungary. Lantos Sweat is the daughter of the late U.S. Congressman and Holocaust survivor Tom Lantos. She was awarded the Knight's Cross of the Order of Merit from Hungary in 2009. She returned the honor, together with some 100 other recipients, in protest of the award being given to Hungarian journalist and writer Zsolt Bayer, who has made anti-Semitic and racist references in his articles. We reported to you last week that the U.S. Holocaust Memorial Museum in Washington has called on Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban and President Janos Adar, who respectively nominated and granted the award to Bayer, to immediately rescind it. 
According to the AP, Adair's office told a local news website that based on current laws, the award could not be recalled. And taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Tuesday, September the 6th. At 7 o'clock, President of the Shalem Center in Israel, Don Polisar, discusses the positive mentality of the Israeli people despite the pressures they face in a JBS exclusive from the Jewish Center of Teaneck. At 8, Professor Mordechai Kedar of Bar Ilan University talks about the BDS movement on American college campuses. At 9, Mark Golub sits down with President of the Shalom Hartman Institute, Daniil Hartman on L'Chaim. And at 10, former National Director of the ADL, Abe Foxman, talks about his book, Viral Hate, with Jewish Week editor Gary Rosenblatt. And coming up right after this newscast tonight at 6.30, senior fellow at the Council on Foreign Relations, Elliot Abrams, discusses his concerns with the impending Palestinian municipal elections in October, which might be won by Hamas in the West Bank as well as in Gaza. That's on tonight's In the News with Mark Golub. And that's the JBS News Update for Tuesday, September the 6th, 2016. I'm Tisha Bader.